This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. One. Okay, we're back. We're live. It's one o'clock rock <laughs> here on a given Wednesday. Did I get that right? Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. 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 Okay, yeah. and that's Nico Vargas. Nico is um, a millennial. Mm -hmm. He's also a videographer person. Yes. And he does camera work and he does editing. That's why we like him so much. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me, Jay. We like him also because he's millennial. We're going to call this uh, Community Matters. This is a Community Matters show, which is double entendre. You know, Community Matters and it's community matters, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Pun intended. Double intended. Pun intended. Yeah. And um, we're calling this food chain for millennial. <laughs> food choices, yeah. Food, food choices, yeah. Food chain, chain yeah. yeah. Okay, because you know not everybody does this, but as it works out, Nico does it, and we want to know from Nico how he does it, why he does it. We know everything. About six months ago, we had a show on with Michelle Wong, I think her name was, uh, and she was a dietitian from Straub. And she was really terrific, and uh, she knew about she knew about vegan stuff. Mm -hmm. In fact, that in the program, the Ornish program that she was involved in, uh, that's what they do. They do Ornish mm -hmm. uh, and vegan. So, um, so my question to you is: uh, You're a vegan, right? Yeah. You don't look so. like a vegan. How can I tell a vegan? from a, a non-vegan person, Nico? You really can't. I mean, there, I know vegans who, uh, you know, have more weight than more people, you know, or are considered overweight, uh, but they eat really healthy. Um, I personally have a body type where I'm always like this, very lean and, and, I guess, skinny. But no matter what I eat, that's just my body type. That comes from my dad. So I don't think there's a way she to tell... She has the same body type. Yeah, she does. So yeah. um, I don't think there's a way to tell if somebody's vegan unless you talk to them or kind of get to know them a little bit better. But I'll tell you my story a little bit of how I started becoming or eating plant-based foods, you know, vegan can go all the way to... Vegan is plant-based? Plant-based, There's yeah. no meat. There. No animal products, no yeah. dairy, yeah. Uh, no eggs. Yeah. And it's not that you take That's it out... That's not the same thing as vegetarian, though. It's different. Correct. Vegetarian, you, you can have dairy, you can have eggs. Um, and those are not plant-based. Correct. So when we say plant-based, we're excluding not only meat, okay, and fowl and fish. Correct. We're excluding everything that is derived from meat and fowl and fish. Yeah, any like, from animals. Like, for example, milk. You know, that's, yeah. that's so vegans don't do milk. Yeah. So we do milk. We just uh, so instead of milk from the cow, I personally choose uh, nut-based milk, which is cashew milk, soy milk, soy soy protein, and soy anything from soy is a yeah. huge part of yeah. the vegan uh, food. It's not really milk, though. It's not really milk where it comes from a cow. They, they, that's a marketing thing. Isn't it? Yeah, it is. So like I grew up in Colombia, and my my food in Colombia or the food we could eat is heavily relied on. Uh, meat on chicken, yeah. um, not so much fish, but a huge portion is red meat and, and, and meat. Eggs in the morning, that's like what I ate, Lots you know. of cholesterol Coffee, eggs, yeah. you know, so that's like the, the routine breakfast and, and food. So, um, so, but don't you miss the protein? I don't miss I the mean, protein, protein because... Protein is important. Isn't protein I still get one it. of those basic building blocks? Yeah, but I still get it. So I'm not taking out the protein. I'm just replacing it with other foods, which is what I've been learning what to replace my meat with. Uh -huh. So one of those is tofu. It's probably one of the biggest price sources of protein as a vegan that you get. Second one would be lentils, beans, which are not really exciting. Not all beans, just some beans, right? Well, as far as I know... L lentil beans are really good. Yeah. And um, uh, what do you call that? Baked beans. The baked ba beans. Well, I don't know what you call those beans, but those beans that come in baked beans. Those, those are Refried good. beans. Refried beans. Bean. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My favorite kind of beans. So, yeah. I mean, I'm just replacing the foods that I already eat. So, uh, a lot of things that we already eat, which is rice, potatoes, um, they're already, you know, foods that are vegan. You know, we just potatoes? add... Potatoes? You can have potatoes without butter. You can have potatoes without potatoes. sour cream. Potatoes. I mean, it they're, just makes you fat, doesn't it? Potatoes. Well, yeah, they're still part it's of the meal. It's all starch. Right? Isn't potato all starch? It, it's more like a filler. So you like right? starch? I like starch because it's part of the meal, right? So we have our rice, potatoes, and meat. But instead of the meat, I'm adding tofu. I'm adding avocado. I'm adding broccoli. So I'm at just substituting that protein that comes from the animal. Right. Now we do need protein. 100%. I agree. I don't think we should take out protein from our, from, our, from our food or anything, but I think we have to educate on what we're putting on our body and what, you know, be conscious of how often we eat that red meat, you know? Yeah. There's a lot well, of research. Why, why do we have to be careful about red meat? What's the problem well, with red meat that you, you're trying to avoid? I, I want to avoid getting into facts about red meat, but I'll tell you no, a lot I of don't. diseases. I, I do. I want to I get into it. So, I, well, I here's what I'll tell you. Everything you know about red meat, what's wrong with it? Diseases that come from the red meat, you have the explo exploitation of the cows, for example, which is a huge part of the red meat, exploitation of the chickens, overfishing, which 
goes beyond it's environmental considerations. It's environmental what about cons chemical considerations. Um, I don't know about chemical considerations. I haven't done my research. Well, would you, you agree know? with me that red meat and any meat is actually a problem for for health? Any meat, problem for health. If not, yeah, I think any, it, it can be, if, a, especially if it's overconsumed. I think there's benefit from an animal meat. Yeah, there, 100 percent. There's things that I mean, if you look at diseases and research. Chemical things. Sorry, sorry. Chemicals. Chemical. I, I don't know if they put chemicals the in the meat, body, but I know. The biochemistry. Got it. Of of the meat uh, interacts with the human biochemistry, and you get bad results from that. Those things are dangerous to the human body. This that's what they say. That's what I'm really asking about. Yeah, it's, that's not it's the reason you're say, doing right? vegan, though. So I do vegan for many reasons. The main reason is my daughter. So and my girlfriend was a huge inspiration and and really a supporting. Um, kind of like a backbone to being able to maintain a healthy diet and healthy choices. So when my daughter was born, she's three now, we decided to, her first food was avocado, for example. So she's never had meat. And she may have some in the future, but, you know, I can't really stop her from that. But as parents, we're educating her on, you know, what to eat and what to replace that meat with or that milk in the morning with. So we have oatmeal instead of eggs. We have raisins. We add a lot of nuts, cashews, which is where the iron comes from. Now, I'll tell you one thing that the vegan food does not have uh, that you do find in meat, which is vitamin B12, uh, or in, I think in milk too, but vitamin B12, B for boy, that's the one vitamin that you don't, that a vegan diet or food, which doesn't is not really a diet. So you not, have to take vitamin pills. So you have supplement. to supplement, which, yeah. is, which is good. How, you much? Have, How much of it? Um, there's percentages to that, but there's, I mean, you can take one or two capsules per day. That's usually the, the recommended use. So that's the one thing that you don't really get from the plants or the, you get it from milk, you get it from cashew milk or, or some of the soy milks, but that's the one supplement that you do need to maintain. And that's where the iron deficiency can come in when you don't have your iron or you feel that lack of energy that people talk about is because of that. So, you know, and it's really hard for someone to just go cold turkey and say, I'm not going to eat red meat. Why? Because it, we're so used to having red meat and we don't know, it's not that we... You have a craving? You know, it's not so much a craving, but... The smell of meat being grilled or cooked or something and you're drunk, is that what happens? I mean, do you, I mean, I'm you suffer being, from the lack of it in some way? You, I think you're, suffer, you're just hungry. You just want a warm, hungry. you want a warm, hot piece of meat, you know, uh, not meat, but you want something hot or warm that you can eat and mm -hmm. chew along with your starch or your salad or you whatever else. Potatoes, isn't it? Yeah, but you still need your protein, right? <laughs> so that's where, so I think a lot of, like my challenge was, what do I eat if I don't eat meat? You know, I saw the documentaries about the slaughterhouses and it makes, you know, if you watch a movie or about a cow being slaughtered, you know, it doesn't make you feel good. But we still go and have the red meat, you know, because we don't, you know, we don't see well, the cow. And we spend a lot of money for it, too. And we spend a lot of money. And, but it's not because we necessarily want to, you know, some people, some people may. But I think it's because we don't know what to eat instead of the meat. We don't know what to eat instead you of the meat. You were raised on it like you were. Yeah. Like most people in this like country. Like most people are, you know. Like most people in Europe, and for that matter, Asia. Most people in the world. I mean, there's a few exceptions, but... Most people in the world were raised on the notion that meat is good for you. And, and, and that probably goes back for mm, 100,000 years. Yeah. Um, and people have gotten along. I mean, I remember talking about, oh, yeah, <clears throat> there's this whole thing about the development of, of, the, of the human species. And you, you, the, uh, the, the, the scientists um, were saying that you need to have protein to develop the species, the mind especially. Without protein, you know, you would, you would not the human species would not be as well developed as, as it is now. Uh, the anthropologists, mm -hmm. I've heard say that. Do you agree I, with that or disagree? Um, I guess I would agree, yeah. but I would also say that you can bypass it the way you're bypassing it. Right. So protein doesn't have to be meat protein. Mm -hmm. It can be some other kind of protein. Yeah. And there have been you know, groups in the world, in the rainforest, what have you, that managed to get along without meat protein mm -hmm. with other kinds of protein. But if you don't have protein at all, I think you're, you're probably not going to develop as a group, yeah. as, a, as a species, in the same way as if you did have protein. I mean, I think it's a basic building block. So, yeah, go, go, on that point, you know, a lot of people think that we're, our bodies are designed to eat meat and we're uh, carnivores, I think it's the right term. But we're, our bodies are actually her, herbivores. Well, it's a combination. Um, What's the word they use for both of them? Uh, Multivore. Multivore. Is that <laughs> But, well, you're both a carnivore and an herbivore. Oh, I, I haven't heard of that one. <laughs> but our bodies, by nature, we're designed to be herbivores. You know, the way that our jaws are shaped. You know, a lion, for example, that eats meat, obviously, their jaws go like this. You know, they're, they're designed to eat meat. They have claws. 
their body is for that. You know, we we don't have claws. We don't have this things to make us. You know, we, we hunt. But our jaws are, are built for meat, aren't they? Not necessarily, because they the way they move. That I, I, that's what I was going back to the jaw. The lion goes like this. Yeah. Our mouths can go left and right. Yeah. Um, there's research to back this up, but my point is that our bodies, our human bodies, actually designed to be herbivores. And all the protein that we need, despite of what people may think about the animal, can be found in the plant-based protein, and are mainly our green leaf, green leaf vegetables. So protein, kale, spinach, um, anything that's green, a leaf that's green, lettuce. What about all those stories of these guys with, you know, with spears and primitive bows and arrows who go yeah. out and you know, into the, into the grasslands and, and chase around game. And they would, you know, it was a part of human culture in general. And, and there would be a ritual thing and they would, they would kill game and they would bring the game back and then mm -hmm. have a big bonfire party and eat the game. And this was a big thing for them. It, we didn't get into agriculture as opposed to herbivore culture right, right, for right. a long time. First, it was, uh, you know, killing game on the savanna. Yeah. So I'm wondering, you know, did we evolve in that way, do you think? So, you know, I think we did evolve, but we also became so dependent on the Western diet, which is bacon, eggs, meat, chicken, fish, every single day. So we're consuming these products, every single one of us, you know, multiple times a day, times five days, seven days. So it's just overconsumption of that cow that we have to have, you know, or that chicken. And it's not so much, you know, some people really want that. I understand, and they may feel an attachment to ancestors having to hunt for food. And you know, especially in Hawaii, you go fish for your food. I respect that, but I don't respect the fact that we have to overconsume or we have to eat fish every single day. Well, that's another factor. You, you know? talk about you know growing up in Colombia, and you talk about you know culture points in Europe and Asia and really everywhere. But but the fact is that our what we eat today is not determined so much. Well, of course, culture is important because what your mother tells you that's what you eat. You know, say, Nico, eat this. Mm -hmm. You better eat this. Eat your milk. If you, if you eat your milk. If you yeah. don't eat your milk, you're going to make your mom unhappy. Right. You don't want your mom to be unhappy. But I, I think a lot of what we eat, don't you agree, is is what's sold to us. Yeah, 100%. At the supermarkets, on the television, everywhere you look, there, there are people hawking foods at us all day long. And a good percentage, you must know personally, a good percentage of that food is junk food. Mm -hmm. That's what they're trying to sell us. So... Vegan doesn't do junk food, right? Vegan does not. Well, actually, I do a lot of snacks, and you can have you can be an unhealthy vegan. Like I can go to Down to Earth and get myself ice cream and have ice cream, and then I can have a Regular donut. Regular ice cream? Um, it's vegan ice cream, so it's soy based. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So it's no, no milk in there. Um, no, it's soy I mean, milk. cow's milk. Yeah, correct. So it's dairy free essentially. Uh, which, by the way, dairy, a lot of the enzymes in our body are not meant to process uh, dairy. That's, right. That's why a lot of people, you know, have this. Well, a lot of Asian digestion. people can't tolerate milk. A lot of European people can't tolerate milk. Right. You know? yeah. it's, I, it's yeah. so interesting. And the older you get, the more pronounced that becomes. Yeah. So replacing that milk with cashew milk, soy milk, almond milk is a good option or alternative, right? So, and replacing the eggs with oatmeal. You know, have oatmeal, raisins, cashews. It's a good breakfast for my daughter. Yeah. Avocado toast. She gets tired. Peanut of butter, jelly. I do. Don't you, you know, pass by really? I do. You know, a steak that's in, yeah. a, in a restaurant and say, "Ooh, I want, I want to go back to that." I need to have that once in a while. Don't you, don't you say so that? So I've had that feeling. And what I found, I thought it was I wanted the steak. And it's not that I wanted the steak or the chicken. It's that I just wanted a hot plate of food. And that's because after I eat the steak or I eat the tofu or the stir fry, I have the same feeling. Like my, my craving is satisfied. I had my meal, right? But what changes is how I feel, right, when I go to the bathroom or how my body feels after I eat steak or chicken. Different digestive process. Yeah, so I feel you better. You are what you eat. Exactly. So for lunch today, like, I'm downstairs, I'm at the restaurant, I'm looking around, there's pork and eggplant, which eggplant is good, not going to go for the pork, there's orange chicken, and then there's tofu and then a bunch of vegetables that are tossed in this sauce, right? So I get the, I get the bowl of tofu and, and sauce, you know? Now, I'm, when I'm looking at the meals, I'm like, okay, I see chicken, that would be something that can satisfy my hunger, right? I see the pork. But I choose, I mean, I'm more aware of the fact that I could eat the pork, it, I'm going to have side effects from that, you know. You know, I'm affecting more than just that pork. I'm affecting the environment. There's things that, a chain of reaction to that decision. So I think my point for today, too, is that I want to just make people aware of what they choose every day, starting from the next meal they have, you know. Yeah, yeah. When you go shopping, yeah. you know, go, <coughs> McDonald's has no options, you know, to really eat, but it, we're so dependent on fast food, especially as millennials. Yeah, we are. We, we're just go, go, and go, and go. I'm going to go jack in the box. And my girlfriend has been a support system where, because she cooks a lot of the time, you know. If I didn't have her, guaranteed I would probably be more dependent on fast food. I don't cook that much. 
So I would probably be more dependent on buying a steak or cooking something just for the sake of eating. Shoot keeper. <laughs> but you know, but my question, you know. and you don't have to answer it now because yeah. we'll take a break. My question is, suppose you find that the tofu dish you had downstairs was cooked in the same pot as the pork or the chicken or the fish or the beef. That's a great point. Doesn't that bother you that the, those fatty oils, the ones that are troublesome and come from troublesome places, they're, that they're involved in your meal even if you didn't, well, don't answer. We're gonna take a break. He's gonna answer <laughs> after we come back. Okay, that's Nico Vargas. He's a millennial, oh my goodness. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Some say scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Aloha, welcome to Hawaii. This is Prince Dykes, your host of the Prince of Investing, coming to you guys each and every Tuesday at 11 a.m. right here on Think Tech Hawaii. Don't forget to come by and check out some of the great information on stocks, investing, your money, all the other great stuff, and I'll be your host. See you Tuesday. Back, okay. All right. So, knowing, and I think you could make the assumption, that there's non-vegan food in the pots in which the vegan food is cooked, doesn't that trouble you? After all, Veganism is a story of purity, purity in the food chain, purity in your body, mm -hmm. purity. And, and you know, you, you want to feel pure. Uh, and when you do become a vegan, you do feel pure. Mm -hmm. And so isn't, isn't that offensive to your sense of purity? It is. And unfortunately, there's ways where, you know, you go out to eat and you may not be able to find a way out of the, cook, the pot they cooked or the knife they use or cross contamination between food. Um, there is no way around it. Even if you're 100% committed to veganism, you are going to have situations where you are not going to be able to have so this 100%. It's a compromise. Yeah. yeah. Well, what about my steak, my steak uh, scenario? You know, so you say once a month, okay, my girlfriend, she'll, she'll compromise with me. We won't give too much to the baby, just a little bit, you know. We just want, we want, we want the, the little family to have an, an experience with, with meat, maybe once a month, a little bit, a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a compromise, and, and so you don't, you don't feel so pure that you don't even touch it. You buy that? No, I don't. Like bringing food into the house, or? Well, it doesn't matter where. So, no, I, I, we, don't, we don't buy into that. Um, so w the reason we started was obviously Jade, which is my daughter, and the way we started was after we had transitioned out of red meat, we, my girl, I come home one day and my girlfriend's like, we're going to go vegan. So we had just bought bacon, you know, we had to go to Costco. So we have all I mean, this. This didn't exist before. You were together before. We were together. And one day she comes home and she says, Nico, we, yeah, we're, we're going vegan. We've been playing with the what idea. What did you say to that? I was, I was like, you know what, I'm, 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 I'm open to it. I was You're like, a very amenable like, guy. You must like her very much. I like her, yeah. I like her, you know, she, but the point is that it was just, it was in a way cold, cur cold turkey where one day we're just like, let's do what it. What made her say that to you? What, what, what made her? I, to be honest, it was our daughter. We wanted to have foods in the house that we could all eat. So this was all for the benefit of the child. For the benefit of the child, all, all ourselves too, because we had seen the documentaries. But, we but, had but ultimately, with the you idea. did it for the child. Ultimately, it was for the child. I mean, it was mostly for her, for my, my, my girlfriend too. For me, it was never like a thing because I've always been healthy. So I was never concerned about my weight or my you know health issues. I was young. I was like, maybe later, you know. That was my attitude. And... I love, you know, eating foods because that's what I ate my whole life. How long ago was that? Uh, I think we're going on three years now. My mm -hmm. daughter's about three, three, so it's right around So three. you feel better? You know, for me, I didn't notice a huge difference. Some people say they feel more energetic. I noticed a lack of energy, and then that's why I started to find out why, why which is B12, vitamin B12 supplement, and nuts, which is your iron. So you started taking B12? And, B12 and, and, and iron, and, and a lot of nuts. A lot of nuts. A lot of uh, snacks. You take too many nuts, it's not so good because nuts have, has oil in it, and oil <laughs> is not necessarily a good thing for you. Vegans have to watch out for too much oil. <laughs> Sorry, I know a little bit. You're funny. This, yeah. No, 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 <laughs> totally. Um, I don't know if oil, if too much oil is bad for you. We I like olive oil and such. But um, one day I come home and th that was that. You know, we decided to take all the food out of the freezer, even though we, we had just bought a lot of, you know, sure groceries. Sure would have. We put it out. We gave it to our neighbors. We didn't okay. totally dispose it. Okay. Um, so a lot of bacon, a lot of milk, you know. And then we started to shop at Down to Earth. We started to shop at other stores. 
And we also found that it's cheaper to be vegan because you don't... Meat is expensive. Meat is very expensive. It's extremely expensive. You buy a tray of, you know, whatever meat, maybe 20 bucks, $25 for, yeah. say, a family. Oh, yeah. or for yeah. That's because it takes so much carbon to make the meat. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and chicken, likewise, and fish, likewise, I suppose. And for that matter, products like eggs, you know, yeah. uh, eggs are not cheap. And, <clears throat> and eggs have a lot of cholesterol in them. It's bad for you if you care about cholesterol, and we all should care about it cholesterol. But, um, you know, uh, what about your girlfriend? Is she feeling better? I mean, is she feeling better in the last three years since she had this, she has, this she has, moment? <laughs> this moment, yeah. She's feeling dr drastically better, to be honest. She's had red meat her whole life. Um, I mean, she lives vegan. You know, she's about the whole lifestyle of vegan, right? It goes beyond food. So you think it's forever? Um, I think so. I mean, I don't see why not, you know? I don't see Could why. Could you imagine yourself going back the other way and, you know, not necessarily, on these points? Not necessarily, you know, because I just... It's just like, well, I already know, like, number one, how the animals are treated. I learned a little bit more about the effects on the body or the effects that red meat can do to somebody. Um, I don't know if I would want to switch back, you know, especially. How about, how about your daughter? Are you, are you trying to inculcate this notion into her? Are you telling her, you know, we don't like red meat. We only eat the vegan meat. And let me explain the difference. Is she old enough to appreciate that? Not, not yet, but she does understand um, animals. And we have, my girlfriend wrote a song, Animals Are Our Friends. Because they are. We don't eat our friends. We don't eat our friends, yeah. So <laughs> the other day we're at the park, this beetle flies down, you know, and this little kid starts to play with it and kind of toss it around. Yeah. And she comes up, you know, she's a little three-year-old, you know, very happy. She's like, whoa, 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 what are you doing? You know, like, animals are our friends. Like, don't, don't, you know, don't kill don't it. Don't kill the beetle. Don't kill the beetle. She's dead serious. Like, and it comes from the song that my girlfriend wrote, which is Animals Are Our Friends, which goes back to the cows, the bees, everything, you know. And, um, <laughs> That's great environmental stuff. So, so, I mean, is this, is this part of your millennialism? I, I, I I say that as if it were a virus, but uh, <laughs> is, this, is this part of your millennial outlook on things or what? I would agree with that. I, th I think there's a, a revolution happening with people becoming more conscious of the environment, you know, what they eat. They already, people already know that the red meat is not necessarily good. People yeah. know that fast food is not good for us. We yeah. just do it because it's fast. Well, are you going to try to change the world on this thing? Because, you know, this, the supermarkets, you know, they still have, you know, labeling and they tell you yeah. this is, you know, s stuff that may be bad for you. and. And uh, at the same time, the next aisle over has all the junk food in, in huge supply. And then, the, the, you know, although once in a while the fast food restaurants make a, a statement about how they're trying to be healthy, bottom, bottom line is they're not, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, so the world is not changing just yet to become vegan. Although I would say that if you look around, you find more vegetarian restaurants, more vegetarian meals, uh, not only in the U.S., but everywhere in the world, you find that. Yeah. So there is a certain, I don't know, a movement, there's a certain development in this regard. People are becoming more aware. So my, my question to you is, is, how is humanity going to adopt this on a large scale? Would you advocate for it? Do you think somebody should? Um, you know, uh, somebody will write a book, Hither and Yon. Somebody will make a statement on, on the media, but... You know, I don't. I don't see carloads of people shifting like you did. You know? Yeah, it's it's a difficult shift. You need to have a support system. You need to really educate yourself on what to replace your food with. I think that's the biggest thing, and it comes back to starting with the choices you make every day. So next time you have a meal, just be conscious of where that red meat came from. You know, it's not your piece of steak. It's not your piece of chicken. It's someone. It's a living being that was out in the field that somebody slaughtered for you to get that on your plate. You know, so it's. I think people just have to be more conscious and more aware that. Next time they have red meat, there's effects that come to that, you know? Why not have your tofu at least start one day a week? Why not have oatmeal instead of eggs? Why, why not have maybe a piece of toast with avocado or peanut butter and jelly instead of cream cheese and butter? So that's something that people can implement right away, and potentially that can be spread onto the next person and the next person and the next person. I don't think going out into the world and saying, I'm going to be vegan and you have to be vegan and you have to eat what I eat, I don't think that's effective. But my story is effective. I'm, I'm still alive. My daughter is three. She's 100% vegan, healthy, no, you know, no signs of anything. She's fine. You know, she's running, full of energy, great sleep cycle, great digestive system. Um, I went to the doctor just to get a random checkup. My blood pressure was healthy. He's like, you have a really good blood pressure. And I, I mean, I've never been concerned about it, but he's like, you have, your blood pressure is really good. I'm like, I've been eating plant-based foods the past year. You know, this is about two years ago. He's like, that's the best blood pressure I've seen in a male at your age, for your age you know, group or whatever. So that's my story. What's you know? the integration of this and um, exercise? This and exercise. What do you mean by that? Is there that? a relationship? I don't know. Does he can help you with exercise? Does exercise help you be a vegan? 
I don't know if that would help me. I don't think so, to be honest. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have a direct, direct answer for you. I do know that sometimes like, there is protein in the animal that makes you feel more aggressive, that makes you feel maybe more like an animal, like you are what you eat, right? So you eat a cow. You do have that sense of like, I'm a cow, I'm a beast, or I have this anger. Or, <coughs> I, uh, I have so, never felt that way. So I, I've heard about people feeling that, you know, where they, if they want to feel more aggressive or they want to feel more, you know, so-and-so, they'll have meat, just to have that sense. If you have plant-based foods, that? you may have, what? Is there anything to that? Eh, possibly, if you're trying to work out, you know, you're trying to get this energy so then, so in business, sort, of, sort of beast mode active. In business, you know? then, if I, if, I'm, if I eat red meat, I'll be a more aggressive businessman. In, in and, theory, and that's... Substitute, tofu, maybe not so much? In theory, that's what I'm saying, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> It, it's true. I mean, you do have you you eat something that comes from a cow, and you're eating, there's part of it that's energy that's coming from that cow, and you put it into your body. It can translate into what you do and how you act. I do believe that. Do you foresee a time when your generation will <clears throat> emerge as leaders on this issue, and that there will be more veganism, and that in fact the world will turn more to veganism, and <clears throat> there'll be less meat out there, and and agriculture, especially involving animals, will change. Do you? You foresee that? I do. Yeah. I actually, it's already happening. I mean, you look at research, you look at stats, it, it's more like doubled. I think it was like 0.5% or something was the amount of people who were vegan like 30 years ago. Now it's like 2.5. Uh, most of them are women, but you'll see a lot of males that are, you know, I, I know a personal trainer who's, you know, ripped, the guy looks huge, you know, very healthy. He's 100% vegan. So I do see, especially in millennials, that are, we have, have more information available, we have more resources. I think we are able to. Uh, become vegan, We're, or at least make better choices about food. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they'll be. I don't think we'll all go vegan, but I think real people are going to start making better choices about what they eat mm. and start to reduce how much meat they have in their diet. You may be giving too much credit to people. I as mean, there are people out there that smoke. Yeah. <clears throat> if they smoke, they're not going to care too much about you know being vegan. Uh, they deny climate change. They're not going to care too much about the environmental yeah. things that you care about. If they like coal, um, you know they're not. They're not going to be into environmental issues. And so um, the government has to be, uh, sometimes for some people, maybe for a lot of people, the government has to set the standard. Um, otherwise, people will fall back on bad habits. And, mm -hmm. and I think that's just the reality of it in this country and mm, everywhere. That's yeah, unfortunate. So yeah, it is unfortunate. So then, then you know, <clears throat> there has been regulation about pure foods. There has been regulation about labeling. There's been regulation about you know, the way supermarkets you know, organize their, their, their content, uh, merchandise. And certainly um, there's, there's a, new, a new wind blowing with uh, Amazon Go, if you know mm -hmm. about Amazon Go. Um, but my question is, should the government get involved? Should the government put a tax on beef? <laughs> like on carbon, you know? Should, should the government get involved and try to redirect the way people think and make choices? Wouldn't that be a constructive thing for the government to do things to incentivize good eating, affirmatively incentivize veganism? Wouldn't that be a good thing? I think it would be 100% a good thing. Um, getting it done would be difficult because meat industry provides so much money to, I mean, the economy really, right? We're so dependent on meat. I don't think they want us to get away from meat. I don't think they want us to get away from milk. Because no, there's a meat lobby, is it? Yeah. Like, and there's a milk lobby. I don't too. see it happening, to be honest. I think it's going to be very difficult to pass unless, you know, us people start to, you know, not speak up, but make better choices. And as consumers, reduce how much money we're putting into meat, you know, how much money we're putting into fast food, how much money we're putting into dairy. If we, if we, each of us make that choice, then you're going to see a compound effect of more people reducing how much meat they have. And then the economy or the meat industry is going to realize there's not much demand for meat. Therefore, we, should, we don't have to put as much money into it. We don't have to put as much marketing into it, you know? And then they'll start to see a change of people. That's, that's what I project, and that's what I think would be the best, you know? It starts from making the best choice as a consumer today on your next meal, yeah. So. Well, <clears throat> By the way, I hope it comes soon. Yeah, yeah I, I was at the grocery store. I look at Spam, just out of curiosity, you know? Spam? Spam. <laughs> if you look at the ingredients, the first ingredient is mechanically processed or mechanically separated chicken. That's the first ingredient in spam, right? So, and that's what we most of most of spam is mechanically processed chicken. Most or well, I, I mean, when you say first, you mean it's the largest, the, the first single ingredient. ingredient. Well, it's, I think there's four ingredients, but the first one is mechanically separated chicken. Yeah. So think about that. You're literally a mechanic, mechanic machine is separating the chicken and putting it into a can, which goes down, you know, on the truck to the grocery store, which goes onto the the wasabi's or what are they called? The what's the 
Wasumis? Wasabis, right? Ben, Spam Wasumis or some 7 Eleven has Yeah, them. okay. Anyway, I can't think of it right now. We, all, you know, it's a pop popular food in Hawaii. Almost every kid has a Spam. Um, musubi. Musubi, right? Spam Musubi. And so, that, you know, that goes back to the fact that as consumers, we're choosing to buy that, you know? As parents, they're choosing to buy that. And they may not even know well, that's. Are you the, offended the by the <coughs> notion that the chicken is being. Mechanically pulled apart. Yeah, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's, it's 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 disturbing to think about that. You know, it's, but we still it's buy a it. humane society you know? kind of approach. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, I, I don't. At which point is that acceptable? Why is it acceptable to separate a chicken, for God's sake, you know, from a machine? So that disturbs me. We don't see that firsthand. We just see a nice red can with meat or spam, and we're like, that's really good. I'm going to put it on my on my rice, you know, and or my sandwich. So for all of meat, and if you take that view, and see all of meat that way, it's it's not terribly appealing yeah. because you have to imagine how they got it out of the cow yeah. or the chicken or the fish. You know? yeah. Okay, yeah. well, thank you very much. That was a very, very interesting discussion. <laughs> I'm glad it. to have <laughs> met you on, on the field. On camera. On the, on the, no, the, the field of, of food. Thank you. The food chain for millennials uh, with Nico Vargas. Thanks very much. Thank you, guys. Thanks for being here.